Mixed reactions have trailed the Central Bank of Nigeria's decision on MTN Nigeria over the alleged infractions on Nigeria's forex rules. Biz Makrawane is still with us in studio and will address some of the questions that worry investors about this move. Biz Makrawane, we were chatting about this just a few minutes into uh, before the show began. What impact first should we expect on MTN? Well, the way I look at it is, first of all, the accusation is that there was an irregular remittance of um, dividends. So you come back and ask yourself, what is the dividend process? What do you have to do to be able to, first of all, there must be a certification of importation of capital. There has to be, you have to file your tax returns to show that you have met all your tax obligations, statutory tax returns. The banks have to be certified that your documents are genuine. And then it goes through the process. And after that, the banks are also audited, right? NCC audits the, um, the telco. The banks are audited by the central bank and the NDIC. And so this is quite a pretty much elaborate and transparent process. So what is the impact one on MTN as a company? Yes. Now, $8 billion, refund of $8 billion, the market capitalization of MTN is $10 billion. So you're saying that in the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, you are asking a company to remit 80% of its market capitalization. No wonder the stock exchange in Johannesburg, it stock dropped by 25%, almost suspended trading on it. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a serious blow, one, so on the company. Two, on its performance, when we look at this industry needs a minimum of $1.5 to $2 billion of capex every year to even maintain your data, your voice, your drop calls and all of this, MTN is, has 54% of this industry. They invest a minimum of $1.5 to $2 billion every year. Fizmak, what is the confusion, really? We got a report this morning, the latest update said CBN actually did clear MTN and the four banks uh, to transact on the now-flagged CCIs as at 2017. Yes. So where did the confusion stem from? If you're able to shed well, more light on that. Well, that is why I'm saying that there needs to be clarity. Some, somebody has to come clean. Somebody is not telling us the whole truth. And that's why I said the process is very clear. It is impossible, almost very unlikely, let me not say it's impossible, unlikely that Citibank, which is actually regulated by the controller of currency in the U.S., which is a very stringent regulator, Standard Chartered by the Financial Prudent and Con Conduct Authority in the UK. Stanbic by the South African Reserve Bank. And of course, Diamond Bank. It is very, very unlikely that these banks will come together to conspire to falsify documents to carry out uh, what we can call on Nigerian activities. Very unlikely. So there are huge implications for MTN, huge implications for the, the industry, for, for the, the economy, industry. for the markets now. Yes, now let's take it. So we've talked about the industry. What is going to happen is that there's going to be a, a major slowdown in investments. And the impact on productivity, Nigeria's productivity, labor productivity is already minus four. So minus this is wrong four. signal. No, if you don't invest, even to settle your POS terminals and all your transactions, the payment and settlement system depends a lot on the investment and base stations, towers, and all of these things. If you reduce this investment because the companies uh, actually uh, feel embattled, right, not just uh, the company, but the industry as a whole, the impact on productivity for Nigeria is going to at a time when we need to boost growth. So it has serious implications. We could have thought about it. We shouldn't be talking about it after the event. Now, so that is one, the impact on industry and capex. Then investor confidence, and we saw that already this you know, investor confidence is mainly negative because people don't know. We don't know what has gone wrong. We don't know who has, who has um, offended or whether there's an infraction, whether it's an inappropriate, whether it's irregular, whether it's forged. Nobody's clear. So it's just in the air. And once there's uncertainty, people actually, the default mode is to actually move your money out. Let's look at the timing. The just timing ahead of the Ghana just, IPO. Ahead yeah. of much talks about the Nigerian IPO also later on. Look, let me tell you this. We need this move just as, as much as we need a bullet in the head. No question about this. We, this is what we, all you need is this, because the reserves are below for the six billion dollars. The U.S. is increasing interest rates. Everything seems to be moving directly. Oil production is back up. The GDP growth numbers came in, and they slumped from 1.95 to 
we don't need this. We don't need it. We don't need any erosion of confidence in any form. Now, if the CBN thinks that there have been these infractions for over 10 to 13 years by leading uh, uh, banks and then telco, does this not hint at maybe wider issues that are being buried? Uh, well, I don't know. That is, that is the question. There's, there needs to be some clarity. We don't know. It is inconceivable that the central bank will just wake up one day and say, hey, you did something wrong. Somebody must have checked something somewhere. But it's also mostly highly unlikely that all of these multinational companies will come together and conspire because they sign every month you sign that you have not breached any local rules and all of that. So you're reminded every Absolutely. month. Absolutely. And immediately we've seen a reaction by um, Stambik this morning mm. matching the CBN's allegation point for point and stating they should be in the clear and cannot afford to no, agree you can't because the, the, the impact is incredible. But don't forget that the, the chief executive of Standard Chartered Bank International was on the delegation with Theresa May. So for him, I mean, it could have been a a, a blow to say that the bank which I lead in, and the subsidiary in Nigeria, when you are talking about investments, is now being indicted for, you know, on Nigerian activities. Do you see, do you consider this maybe a targeted move or do you find anything suspicious regarding well, well, the timing? Let me put it, it's not suspicious, it's curious. Curious well, is the curious. word you're going with. Right. It's curious because I, I don't, I, first of all, I don't understand it because there's no clarity and I don't understand the timing. It's a bit curious. So, so definitely we do the need benefit, some clarity. The benefit of doubt is that the regulator, the Nigerian Central Bank, will not, will not go ahead and go and do this kind of things without doing some homework. But if it did, like what we are seeing, if it did, then this is a real big problem. The way out, the exit barrier is infinitely higher than the entry barrier.